As every day, dozens of people were walking through a busy sidewalk of the city when the sound of heartbreaking screams caught the attention of the crowd, who were shocked to see what was happening through a window which was in the middle of a large building. A little boy was crying desperately while his small body was hanging from the hand of a man. Immediately, everyone began to scream to order the man to stop while trying to contact the police to notify what was happening. What happened next left them all speechless and without a doubt is something they will never forget for the rest of their lives. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real life stories every day. Now, back to the story. Carolina was a young and humble girl who had been raised in a Catholic family, who had instilled her faith in her since she was very young. Every Sunday, her parents took her with them to Mass, while the rest of the week they always took a few minutes to go to Mass with her. They always took a few minutes a day to read together the Word of the Lord and to teach their little girl that the most important thing in life was to love God above all things, because if she loved God, she would love every being in the world and she would be a good person. As the years went by, Carolina grew up and became a beautiful young lady, thanks to the effort of her parents who worked tirelessly, selling exquisite handmade bread, which were very popular in the town market. And the support of a generous family who attended the same church as them, she was able to get into a good university. She was able to study to become a veterinarian, something she had always dreamed of since she was a little girl. In that new environment, far from her home and surrounded by people, Carolina felt overwhelmed and was even teased. When one day, she asked her classmates where was the church they attended on Sundays. What? Do you come from a nun's school? Sundays are for resting after partying, said one of them while they all laughed out loud. The poor girl felt so ashamed and wanted so much to fit in that little by little she was moving away from her faith and adapting to the customs and lifestyles that according to her friends, people of her age should lead. And that was how years later, while partying with her friends, she met Rodrigo, a boy from another university, who as soon as he saw her began to flirt with her. And from that day on, he went looking for her everywhere, until he finally won her over and they started dating. He was the son of a wealthy family, and his parents were also the leaders of a mysterious religion of which he belonged. After months of romance, Carolina proposed that they travel to his town so he could meet her parents. And although he always made some excuse, he finally agreed. That day, while she and her mother were preparing the room where they would sleep, she took the opportunity to tell him that Rodrigo had told her to move in together, and she had liked the idea. You should think about it better, my girl. I think you are rushing too much. Besides, there is something I don't like about that boy. When she heard her mother's opinion, the young woman was very upset. Is it because he doesn't believe in the same God that you do? No, it's not that. It's just that there is something strange about... Don't give me explanations, I don't want to hear you. Rodrigo was right in not wanting to come here. You don't know anything about the real world. Since that visit, Carolina moved away completely from her parents and just as she had planned, she moved into her boyfriend's apartment to start a new life with him. Although at first everything seemed to be rosy, little by little Rodrigo's unusual beliefs began to turn into a real nightmare for Carolina, who by then had just found out she was pregnant. Upon learning the news, Rodrigo, who had become a controlling and possessive man, forced her to follow his rituals even against her will, became even more restrictive about what she could and could not do, and forced her to drop out of college for good. During the entire pregnancy, he restricted food, regardless of the fact that the doctors told him that it could be dangerous, and did not allow her to take the vitamins that they sent her. Luckily, little Joel was born completely healthy. But Carolina's body was so worn out that the doctors informed her she wouldn't be able to conceive any more children. Since she had him in her arms, she knew that Joel would be the most sacred thing she would have in her life, and she dedicated herself to taking care of him, body and soul, very different from what she had dreamed. That wasn't easy, because her main threat was his father and his constant rituals, which also involved the little one, and to which she couldn't refuse because if she did, he assured her that he would use his money to take him away and she would never see him again. Tired of that chaos and fearing for what he might one day do to her son, Carolina secretly planned to flee from there to her parents' home and use her savings to leave with them far away from there. But just when she was about to do so, a strange virus collapsed the cities and people were forced to stay in their homes until further notice. As if nothing could be worse, she had to endure the anguish of that confinement accompanied by her in-laws, 
who kept repeating that this evil had been sent to eliminate the impure, who were the only ones who could be infected, and celebrated their deaths which brought so much pain to the families. That morning, Joel's screams woke up Carolina, who seeing what her husband was about to do began to cry for help and beg him to please stop. The last few days the little boy had been down and looked a little sick, so Rodrigo decided to contact the family doctor to check him and make some tests that confirmed that the little boy had been infected. Rodrigo was the one who received them, and when he saw them he went crazy and went directly to his son's room, feeling indignant that having brought an impure being, he took him in his arms and assuring that he could not allow that no matter that he carried his blood, he had to comply with the designs of his god. He took them out of the window and prepared to throw him from that building. Regardless of the heart-rending pleas of his wife, that man released the little one, and unable to believe what had just happened, Carolina fainted from the shock. When she regained consciousness, the woman's eyes filled with tears as she saw that an officer was holding her son in his arms safe and sound. A real miracle caused Joel to get caught in the clothesline of some neighbors a few floors below, from which they managed to rescue him. A few moments later, warned by dozens of witnesses, the authorities broke down the door of the apartment and took Rodrigo under arrest, who neither his millions nor his power could save him from being sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison. Carolina was given special permission to go home to her parents once the little boy was cured and when she arrived they received her with the greatest of emotions. Something told us that you were not well so there wasn't a day when we didn't kneel down to pray and ask for your well-being and that of our grandson. It was a miracle, exclaimed her parents after hearing what had happened. What do you think of this story? Do you think Carolina did wrong by not listening to her mother and leaving aside her faith for other people? Let me know your opinion in the comments, and before you go, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss all the content that, with much love, I bring for you. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.